Hi, I'm sorry to be a second late starting. Alex McFarlane here. I've just, I was late getting to the studio. I was stuck in traffic. These knuckleheads wouldn't go on. I wanted to get here and talk about today's topic and I'm running a little late and I apologize. Ah, because today's topic is patience. Sorry for that weird opening. I wasn't acting very patient, was I? I was uh, thinking about the topic and no, I wasn't stuck in traffic. I'm glad to be here, just making a point. And we're gonna talk about the subject of patience. And when I think about impatience, I was uh, thinking about what to do about today's script and you know, try to bring it vividly to life. And I thought about a movie that I bet many of you have seen, the movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Do you remember years ago, just quintessentially played by an actress named Julie Dawn Cole. There was a character, Veruca Salt. Do you remember Veruca Salt and her line, I want it and I want it now. I remember seeing that movie as a kid and we went around saying that and you know, my mom would say, stop it, because we didn't want to be like that. I want it now. But a lot of us look, if we're honest with ourselves, we get impatient, don't we? And sometimes the person that needs to cultivate patience is ourselves. It's you and it's me. And, and I want to talk a little bit about being patient. In this busy world, the world can be stressful enough, and now we've had the quarantine and the lockdown. But, um, you know, the Bible, the Word of God has a lot to say about being patient. In Psalm 40, it says uh, that uh, we're to patiently wait on the Lord. The prophet Jeremiah in the Old Testament talks about uh, waiting for the Lord and God is good to those that wait on him patiently. Uh, very famously in the 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the famous love chapter, when I've done weddings, always you read 1 Corinthians 13 and it says love is patient and kind. And the Bible talks so much about the things like patience, kindness, gentleness, the fruits of the Holy Spirit that do. It's like the, the oil uh, to keep metal from squeaking, uh, patience and gentleness and kindness and perseverance and long suffering. These are the things that make relationships run smoothly. Very interesting. I thought the Apostle John in Revelation 1 verse 9, talking to the, the churches in Asia Minor, inviting the people into the relationship with Jesus Christ, obviously, but it says the kingdom of Christ and of his patience. Isn't that something that one of the attributes of the king and the kingdom is the attribute of patience? And I think when patience is reflected in our lives, it's reflective of the Lord's work within us. Um, in 2012, the Journal of Positive Psychology did a long study about patience and impatience. It's very, very interesting, and they sort of quantified the things in life that cause us to be impatient. And they put them in three headings, and I think it was very well done. One are daily hassles. The other are interpersonal interactions. And then finally, life's hardships. Now, daily hassles, like you know, waiting in line at the post office or getting stuck in traffic, maybe. And then there are interpersonal interactions. Maybe we've got to smooth out an argument with a friend or, or a family member, or maybe things like unemployment or un underemployment. I know during this pandemic, a lot of people are underemployed, and those are, those are our hassles and stresses and interpersonal things that we've got to stay on top of. But then the hardships of life, like a, a, an illness, cancer, or a death of a spouse, or, or some major life change. And I know you've probably heard of the, the holmes Rahe scale of life change units, moving to another city, changing careers, things like that, having a prodigal child. All of these things can cause us to be stressed and lose patience. So how do we cultivate patience in our lives? Basically three ways. Um, you've got to recognize when impatience is welling up within you. You've got to depersonalize and not take things to heart and then keep your eye on the big picture. So, so let me give you some things about cultivating patience in your own life. A do, a don't, and a do. Do recognize when stress is welling up within you and you can train yourself. You absolutely can create habits, emotional, you know, the, the, the endorphins and the adrenaline can be very toxic. 
and you can create new neural pathways. Recognize when you're getting out of control and then don't personalize. When the cash registers go down at the store and they've got to reboot and it's going to make you late, hey, don't take it personally. It's just part of working in this world. I read a quote. It says, the short road to bitterness is paved by taking every little injustice to heart. Hey, let it roll off your back. Don't personalize it. And then do visualize the big picture. Uh, you, you, driving in the car, perhaps, and you've got to keep your eyes on the road and your eyes on the horizon. If you fixate on some little thing, let's say there's a, a, a spot of bird poop on the hood of the car, and that bothers you. But if you fixate on that, rather than watching the horizon, you're going to crash. And, and we all have to be vigilant against doing something like that. So, so recognize when you're getting stressed. And don't personalize the stresses of the day. And then do keep your eyes on the big picture. What's the big picture? Becoming that person that the good Lord wants you to be. Raising that great family. Achieving those goals. And let me just say this too. Pray about it. Uh, say, Lord, help me to be more patient so that I can have peace inside and be a blessing to others. Uh, you know, we're going to take a few questions here in a minute, but I, I want to share a great, great story from one of my favorite TV shows, The Andy Griffith Show. Uh, maybe you've seen on The Andy Griffith Show a very famous episode called Man in a Hurry. In fact, it was named one of the 100 greatest episodes of any program in TV history. And there's a, there's a businessman, he's type A, he's going through the sleepy town of Mayberry and his car breaks down and it's like near the weekend. And he's very frustrated, this slow pace of a town, he can't get his car fixed, he's got to be on his way and be on his way. And as he has to wait, gradually he comes to appreciate the, the pace that's relaxed. He begins to desire it. And this man in a hurry episode, he ultimately realizes that stopping there in Mayberry was one of the best things that could have happened to him because it taught him a little bit of patience. Hold that thought. I want to take a couple of questions. By the way, hey, like our, our channel, if you would, on YouTube, it's Truth for a new generation on Facebook, Rev Alex McFarland. We'd love to hear from you, uh, your questions, if you would keep sending those in. Tell somebody, and if you would, hey, if you like this stuff, we've got so many topics that we are talking about, that we're going to talk about, biblical worldview, helping just become all that God wants us to be. So spread the word if you would. But right now, some of the folks that watch and listen, here's Becca from Massachusetts. Here's a question, perfect question. What can we learn from Joseph when in his youth he was extremely impatient regarding his dreams, but in later years dealing with his brothers in Egypt, Joseph is considered a sage and very patient. How can we live by his example? Thank you, Becca from Massachusetts. Okay, Genesis 37 through 45, the story of Joseph, one of my favorite Bible stories. I actually wrote a whole book about it. Uh, that you can find online, The Life of Joseph. As a youth, he was given dreams that he's going to be a leader. It, it, eventually, his family is going to bow down to him, his brothers. His brothers were jealous. And as you probably know, they sold him into slavery. He winds up a, a slave in bondage in Egypt. But there's a great famine, and Joseph is able to be used by God to save the lives of many people. His brothers come to get grain, and... Joseph is not the uh, tempestuous, impatient youth they sold 22 years prior. But now, not only is he in a position of leadership, he's a good leader. He's a patient leader. He's a compassionate, merciful leader. What's the difference? Do you know what? When Joseph was thrown in a pit, and thanks to Reuben, he was taken out, when he sat in a, an Ishmaelite wagon and was sold into slavery. He was later falsely accused in Potiphar's house. He sat in jail. Do you know what he didn't do? The reason that we watch Joseph go from an impatient young man to a very controlled, patient, frankly, very wise adult is because those times waiting weren't wasted. He didn't sit there and grouse and say, oh, you know, God has abandoned me. My life stinks. Apparently, he worshiped while he waited. And do you know what? Um, I want to say this. 
because we all have our goals and dreams. Let's go get them, right? Uh, your time is not wasted. It doesn't have to be wasted. Joseph invested his time in looking to God and letting God change him within. And the outcome was very beautiful, such that in Genesis 50, verse 20, he said to his brothers, uh, you might have meant it for evil, but God used it for something good. Becca, thanks for that great question. And here is a note uh, from Shelby in Illinois. If you're watching, Shelby says, thanks for the video. I needed those words. Looking forward to watching you. Very nice sentiment. Thank you so much. It really means the world to us. And I want to say how grateful I am for all of you watching. Uh, Rev Alex McFarlane on Facebook, Truth for New Generation on YouTube. Hey, last thought. Let, let me say this as a minister. In the ministry now, going into my 31st year, been around a lot of people. It's such a blessing. Been around a lot of elderly people. If there's one thing I've heard older people speak of, it's the brevity of life. I've had people in their 90s talk about how it seems to just go by so quickly. So, so let me just say this, a little word. Um, stop and smell the roses, you know. Enjoy the journey. Don't let the little nitpicky things of life uh, make you abrasive. And begin today with God's help to establish a pattern of peace and calm. Listen, I promise you, not only in my own journey, not only the testimony of so many people, but the promise of God's word, the Lord is with you. God's got this. You can trust him. And so, patience. Let the peace of God rule your heart this day and all days. God's with you. I've gone longer than I meant to, so I want to thank you for being patient with me. I went longer than I meant to, but thank you so much. Hey, please spread the word. Repost if you would. Uh, we're on radio. We're online. Uh, we got a lot going on, but we're excited about life, and we're excited about the Lord with us each day of our life. Thanks for watching. You mean so much to me. You really do. God bless you, and we'll see you next time on the Truth for a New Generation webcast.